remember the day like it was yesterday. It was Friday, March 13. I was on my way back, heading north on State Route 23, having returned from the Ohio State Medical Center, having visited and supported one of our members who was there, listening to the radio and hearing about our world that was being turned upside down. Now, I always listen to sports radio, so that's the lens from which I was seeing the world, and March Madness, of all things, was being canceled. And I was confronted by the reality that we might have to cancel church. How do you cancel church? And how can we be the church if we're not gathering together? And if this isn't just for a couple of weeks, what would we do over Easter? And in May, and how about vacation Bible school this summer? And all sorts of questions raced through my head. For seven months, the reality of our life, as it has been for everyone in the world, has been turned upside down. And though I wondered how God would be God and how we would be the church during this time, of course, God has shown up in some pretty significant ways. I marvel at all that has happened in these past few months. We have gone from being a pretty traditional church, which I am just pleased to pastor, to a church that is on the cutting edge, putting their, their services online and doing so very, very well. A church that has a Bible studies that are meeting over Zoom. Do you remember when you didn't even know what the word Zoom meant? And now we are connecting the congregation in some pretty incredible ways. Indeed, as we approached Easter, we wondered, how will we celebrate this most holy time in our faith? And yet God enabled us and 25 volunteers from our congregation to bless our families and families beyond the church with 252 lovingly packed bags that enabled people to worship in unique ways through this time. We thought about those who were really, really feeling the strain of this virus. We recognized that we had a lot of teachers within our congregation who were bearing more than their fair share of the load. And so we moved to try to encourage them in any way that we could. We offered these small gifts, gifts that simply let the teachers in our church know that we saw their love and we saw their effort. We gave 22 gifts out that day. In the middle of the summer, we were able to bless a woman who is almost 100 years old through Habitat for Humanity by, by painting her house. And we served over 400 meals to those in need through Mosaic Ministries. We have continued to be the church even during this time when, when I don't think anyone knew what being the church would look like. Some of my, my favorite stories can't be quantified by statistics or numbers. They are stories that come from maybe a hospital bedside. As one of our members shared about a conversation with the nurse who was there to care for him. She saw the Bible on his table and asking him questions about his faith, ended up asking him to pray for her. And he did. And for days, she recounted back to him what a ministry of love that was to her, even as he was there as the patient. That's what we're called to do as people of the church. Consider this incredible story of how God has used our church to bless those he has drawn into our midst. So as we celebrate what God's been doing uh, in and through the life of our church over the last few months during this uh, time of, of pandemic, one of the things that came to mind that's not exactly related to the pandemic, but, it's, but it certainly happened in the midst of this time, is what God has done in uh, the life of Charlie Sheets. Charlie's a longtime member of this church, uh, an elder, a good friend, and somebody I've been praying with and for for some time. And Charlie, it just, I'm thrilled to see your face and, and share this time with you. So can you tell us, you know, what's happened here over this 
the last few months or at whatever time frame you want to use. Uh, thanks, Clint. I, I could definitely say this wasn't the year I had planned. <laughs> um, uh, I just uh, was recently released from a, a stay at the Cleveland Clinic where I actually got a, a, a new heart. So uh, I'm, I'm humbled and grateful to be able to do that. And, uh, you know, my, uh, I, I've always sort of been uh, kind of a, a little bit of a go-getter guy or whatever, nervous type, you might say, type A. But one of the things, uh, I felt an overwhelming sense of, of calm throughout the whole stay, which was really a blessing because I was there five weeks. And uh, um, with the COVID crisis, I couldn't have any visitors because everywhere I was at was uh, what they call a COVID cold unit. So. I had to rely on, uh, you know, text notes uh, um, and, you know, conversations via phone uh, for that contact. That's, that's, yeah, it's amazing. And, you know, you and I talked and prayed uh, a number of times leading up to um, the actual yeah. time in the hospital and the transplant. And I know it, it, you were really leaning on your faith and, and, and gratefully, I mean, does, it really warms my heart as a pastor to see uh, your faith taking such an important role at such a critical moment. And so, you know, as we're celebrating what God is doing in the life of the church, can, can you just articulate, you did it for me just a little while ago, you know, just what is the life of the church meant to you through this time? Um, and how have you seen your faith grow or change or however you want to uh, speak to that? Yeah, thank you. You know, it, um, I mean, it started with even before I left. Um, one of the things uh, we have at FPC is uh, a, a deacon assigned to look after you. And in my case, it's uh, Larry Combs. And um, even before I left, I got a really nice card from him with a Bible verse, uh, Bible verses in it. And uh, before I left, I folded that up and stuck it in my Bible and took it with me. Um, and and the, the second verse on there is the one we've prayed over a lot, uh, you know, Philippians uh, 4, verses 6 through 7, which is about asking for comfort and uh, praising God. And uh, I used to have a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, as you mentioned, uh, calls from you and uh, uh, were really nice. I got a lot of text messages and stuff. And I, I even had a uh, daily joke from one of the congregation who will remain nameless, uh, but it was a real, uh, always brought a smile to my face, and, and I didn't share those with anybody. <laughs> so <you're saying. laughs> Maybe not jokes that should be shared in church sometimes? <laughs> I can't tell you that. Okay. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, I just know we've, we've been praying for you, and uh, what, uh, what a celebration to hear that God uh, provided an answer to our prayers, you know? Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, it, it doesn't even stop there since we've been home. Um, we have uh, had a, uh, I guess my daughter set up what they call a meal train for us. And, okay. uh, um, you know, many, many people in the congregation have stepped forward to provide uh, meals for us. Actually, I think we're set up through Thanksgiving, which is amazing. Uh, but that's a great uh, load off my primary caregiver, Beth, yeah. uh, because she doesn't have to worry about that aspect of it. And, uh, um, you know, as usual, it's fabulous uh, church food usually. And, uh, um, you know, it's, it, it's wonderful. Uh, again, the feeling of support, you know, uh, truly uh, a church family. Um, you know, has made a real difference. And you mentioned I was a long-term member, you know, that's something uh, um, to me in the last five years or uh, eight years that it's just come to such a neat uh, development there. And I, I really never felt that before. And part of that's probably me, but um, you know, it's a great, it's a great feeling. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're, the whole point of this video is to kind of celebrate what God's done and it's not, wrong that we list numbers of meals served and things like that at Mosaic, but, but the life that we share together can't be quantified in statistics or numbers solely. Um, right. And, you know, one of the changes uh, this whole experience has made in my faith is, um, I mean, I always prayed and I always believed there was, you know, prayers were answered, but 
I guess one of the things that I learned from some of the Bible study I've done over the last year or so was, uh, you know, it's okay to pray for yourself. It's okay to pray specifically about a request that you have. Yep. And uh, I really took this opportunity to do that. And, uh, you know, not only for comfort, but actually directly for a new heart. And, uh, um, you know, I was told I would probably, uh, with my size and, and other matching factors, um, the likely scenario is I'd wait three or four years for a heart and I'd have a thing called an LVAD in between there, which is a, you know, it's a medical device attached to your old heart, but there's all kinds of difficulty associated with that. And then if I was lucky, maybe I'd get a heart. And instead, after about two weeks, I was able to get one. And I'm convinced prayers were answered. I know we had a lot of people praying for us. And, uh, you know, God is good. That, that's amazing. That's amazing. Well, Charlie, I'm just, I'm grateful that you're willing to share your story uh, like this. So thank you for doing that. We're, we're celebrating you. Um, um, uh, you know, we love you and, uh, and we love Beth and it, 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 it's such an important part of the church and to know that we're going to have years now uh, to share with you still. And we're all going to be able to continue to glorify Jesus and share faith together. You know, I'll, I'll not have you do it here, but you even shared, you, you got to share your faith in the hospital and offer comfort and peace to other people. I mean, that, that's what it's all about. And so, um, so we're, we're celebrating God, even as we're, we're celebrating you. And so, yeah, I mean, again, thanks to everyone. I, I'm just so humbled and grateful uh, for the gift I've gotten. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's probably overused, but I do get the feeling God's not done with me yet. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm listening for the next things, and uh, um, again, I, I sort of have a renewed sense of purpose and a new aspect on, on life, and uh, I'm just so grateful. Amen. Stories like the one we've just heard help us recognize the importance of the life of the church, this life that we all share together. So we are reaching out to you, our congregation, as the calendar year draws near to an end and asking you to consider t making a year-end gift to the life of the church. We know that for many, the end of a calendar year is an opportune time to give to the church. And so we want to be transparent and honest about the financial position of the church. We wanna celebrate all that God is doing and we wanna ask you to go before God with this request and simply ask God what you should do. We recognize that this is a time where, where many in our congregation are challenged more than normal. And if, if you are not in a place to be able to make a gift, that is okay, we understand. But I'm also aware that for many, we have benefited during this time when others have struggled. And maybe this is a way we can continue uh, to both glorify God in our giving and in our sacrifice as we seek to pursue the mission God has given us together.